Welcome to probably the biggest update to combat in Old School's history. And if you haven't been keeping up to tabs with all of the blog posts highlighting the upcoming changes, then this video is for you because we're going to highlight everything that has changed in combat going forward. To kick things off, we have NPC defense changes in the first one being elemental weaknesses. And the short version is any NPC with an elemental weakness will now have spells of that element gain a 1% accuracy and damage buff. So for example, if a NPC has a fire weakness, you'll gain a 50% bonus to your accuracy and damage. Using the monster examine on an NPC will clearly tell you whether it does have a weakness. Right here you can see at the bottom it has a 50% earth weakness, meaning using earth spells will give you an additional 50% accuracy and damage. There is a link to a spreadsheet in today's blog that you can pull up to see all of the monsters currently affected by an elemental weakness. Here's what that spreadsheet currently looks like. So I'm not going to be going over absolutely every single NPC on this list. I'll touch on a few specifics here in a minute. Otherwise, if there is a monster you are individually looking for, just go ahead and pull up this list and you can easily find that out. But as for some popular choices, the Barrows Brothers now have a weakness to air along with aviancies. All of the chromatic dragons being the green, blue, red, and black, including their baby variants, are weak to water. This also does include the King Black Dragon. Lava dragons obviously are weak to water as well. Along with a variety of demons being the demonic gorillas, greater demons, hellhounds, including Cerberus. The Zami boss, along with all of the fire things like pyre fiends, fire giants, and things like the giant mole and drakes. Earth weaknesses now affect all of the metal dragons being the bronze, iron, steel, myth, addy, and rune. And then obviously all monsters starting with ice do have a fire weakness now. And then some other ones are things like giant spiders, moss giants, Vespula in the chambers of Zarek, the abyssal portal, and then lastly things like Kefri and Zolra. They have mentioned they've kept this relatively light so that every NPC in the entire game didn't just absolutely change overnight. But there is also a very good chance that a ton of monsters are going to be added to this list in the future. But in other changes for the elemental spell scaling, everybody knows that Fire Strike always was originally stronger than Air. And essentially there was no reason to ever use any of the lower variants as soon as you unlocked the highest fire capability. This changes today. Your max hit with all elemental spells, being the Strike, Bolt, Blast, Wave, and Surge, will now scale to the highest level spell you have unlocked. So for example, if you have level 5 magic, currently you would have unlocked both the Wind and Water Strike, and now originally Air Strike used to have a max hit of 2. Now that you've unlocked Water Strike, your max hit for both of these spells will now be a 4. And this is no different if you go a little higher, so if you have 13 magic and you've unlocked all of the initial elemental spells up to fire, all four spells being air, water, earth, and fire will have a max hit of 8. One other thing to note though is they have not affected the tier's max hits going all the way up, so even if you do have level 99 magic, fire strike will still only hit a max hit of 8. That has not changed. But moving on to maybe even more interesting of a combat change mechanic, we have new range defense types. There are three new categories for the range defense, and that is heavy, standard, and light. The heavy category includes bolts and javelins. Standard, which is arrows, and this does include the bofa and crystal bow. And then light, which is darts, knives, or any other thrown weaponry. They have noted that this change specifically isn't going to be that significant in terms of shifts in gameplay, but these changes allow them to specifically target content in the future. Just like the Magic, there is an included spreadsheet. It is the exact same spreadsheet, so you only have to have one of these up. So if we go back to the spreadsheet all the way over here on the right, you can see the new defensive stats for ranged, the new heavy, the new standard, and the new light. But for some specifics, a lot of the bosses and monsters you currently used bolts for, they do have their heavy defense reduced. Some things like Zilli, Dragons, the Leviathan, Baba, Basilisk Knights, and Skeletal Mystics all have their heavy defense reduced for the range type. A couple changes for light defense being things like Darts, having theirs reduced is Vespula and Lizardman, which would include Lizardman Shaman. And essentially short term, basically these changes were to improve the standing of crossbows in places where they fell drastically behind the Bofa and the Twisted Bow. One last thing to note that is very important before we jump away from the range defense changes, as they have also made a handful of minor adjustments to existing melee defenses to better help with some of the current NPC weaknesses. 
Dragons across the board with the exception of Vorkath have had their stab defense reduced. Gargoyles have had their crush defense reduced. Lizardmen including Shamans have had their stab reduced. Vasa, Mystics, and Basilisk Knights have all had their crush defense reduced. And then lastly, Duke Succulus has had his slash defense reduced. And now for maybe some of the most important changes of this entire update, and that is the item rebalances that are going to be happening to the Magic Gear. The highly anticipated nerf to the Occult Necklace has finally been implemented. The Occult's Magic Damage has been reduced from 10% to 5%. Ancestral Robe Sets per piece have been increased from 2 to 3%. Virtus has jumped from 1 to 2%. And the following items now have a damage increase of 1% up from their initial zero. And this is Infinity Robes, Dagon High, Third Age, Arums, Blue Moon, Elder Chaos, and Blood Bark. Augury's magic damage while active now has an increase from 0% to 4%. It is important to note that the shadow does not multiply with the accuracy or damage gained from prayers. So this does remain 4% rather than 12% when using the shadow. Mystic Might gives a 2% buff now. Mystic Lore will give a 1%. Eternal Boots now have a 1% magic damage. The Mage's Book has 2%. Ancient Wyvern Shield is 2% along with the Malediction Ward. The Arcane Spirit Shield has been given a 3% damage buff. The Seer's Ring has half a percent. And the Elite Void Mage set has a damage increase of 5% now up from 2.5%. Very massive changes that now massively distribute how magic damage is going to be done in the game. As for some other gear that isn't magic related, the Soul Reaper Axe has seen some highly anticipated changes along with the Elder Maul. First up for the Soul Reaper Axe, stacks will no longer be instantly lost when switching weapons. They will just slowly tick down after 20 ticks without attacking, up from the initial 10. And while these stacks do naturally degrade, they'll still heal you just like initially when building them up as long as you still have the axe in your inventory. The Elder Maul now has a new special attack that uses 50% of the special attack bar. It hits with a 25% increased accuracy and reduces the target's defense by 35% of its current value on a successful hit. Inquisitor's armor set now provides a 2.5% increase in accuracy and damage when worn alongside the mace. And if you were interested about the changes to the Tomes of Fire and Water after the early magic changes, they now boost their respective elements by 10% against NPCs down from the original 50. They still boost their damage by 50% and 20% respectively against players. But this in change is intended to sit alongside weaknesses so the tomes stand out as clear best and slot items in their niche. But the strength of the standard spellbook no longer relies entirely on having one of these books. And finally to end off the video we have some last minute miscellaneous combat adjustments. The first, the highly anticipated nerf to the Dragon Warhammer drop rate. The new drop rate for the Dragon Warhammer is now 1 in 3,000, up from the original 1 in 5k. Honestly, absolutely wild to see this drop rate be changed after all these years. Even if it is potentially the right thing to do, it just seems absolutely crazy of a change now. And another wild change is the minimum hit has been adjusted, so if you pass an initial accuracy check... Any damage roll of 0 is now boosted up to 1. So if your max hit is a 3, you can roll a 1, a 1, a 2, or a 3 for damage as long as you pass the accuracy check. They did want to note that you are able to still guarantee zeros via splashing as long as you fail every accuracy check. And they have added a cursed amulet of magic drop rate of 1 in 5 from the Necromancer south of Shazian. And this provides a negative 80% magic damage making it very useful for that exact scenario. They reduced the Prayer Drain Rate for Thick Skin, Burst of Strength, and Clarity of Thoughts, Sharp Eye, and Mystic Will. Effectively, they drain at one-third of the speed that they used to. Attacking an NPC with Autocast Enabled no longer incurs the one-tick delay. And then about for the 25th time, there are some changes to the Monkey Room in the Tombs of a Masket. They've increased the hit points of style-specific enemies inside the Monkey Room but instead they will always take max damage from their opposing style. Therefore, the melee brawler will always be max hit by magic, the baboon thrower will always be max hit by melee, and the baboon mage will always be max hit by range. Now there are a weak and strong variant, hence why there's two different HP levels on each of the monkeys, but it is important to note that none of the enemies in the monkey room will scale with raid level or group size, so these HP values will be consistent in every single run. 
Obviously, this doesn't apply to things like Volatiles, Cursed, and Shamans, because there will be no guaranteed max hit against these three. Baba has had her through prayer damage reduced from 33% down to 25%, and they've also improved the Fasani Nightmare drop rate. Any piece of Inquisitors now drops at 1 in 700, up from 1 in 1,000. Orbs are at 1 in 1,600, up from 1 in 3,000. The Mace is at 1 in 1,250, up from 1 in 2,000. And then lastly, the Nightmare Staff now drops at a rate of 1 in 533, up from 1 in 666. Obviously, alongside these changes to Fasani's, the Nightmare drop rates will also see a scale increase. Ava's devices will now apply their ammo saving effects to javelins just like other ammo types. And with that, that is everything you need to know about today's massive changes to combat. Marking by far the biggest change to the core system of old school we have ever seen. If you guys did enjoy or found this video helpful, consider dropping a like. It massively helps me out. Otherwise, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments below and I will catch you in a new video.